Good morning, Vietnam! <laughs> uh, dear diary, it is the 26th of March, 2000... Hoax call. Sales. Right. I might as well not start this video again because I think it's going to be a long one. You know, final word on the event, I think. I'm not going to make any more videos about that, even though it's a great way to um, up the views on your videos. But even with these loads of views I've had on these recent videos, not many more subscribers, not much commenting. So, you know, I don't know what these clicks, who's clicking. Anyway, so I'm not just going to make videos naming it the event just to get um, more views. Even though that would be tempting, but it's not about that. It's, for me, it's about getting things off my chest, having things straight, um, so I can say, yep, yeah, well, I said that at that point, and that's that. Right, so there's going to be a few topics here. Um, dispelling myths. Uh, the event, of course, and what I feel about that, how, what I think has happened. Um, quick bit on AJ Miller, although I've said <laughs> I'm going to not say anything more about him. I, I am going to today. And, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, why don't I start with dispelling the myths. No, I'll start with the event and then it may come up again. Right, so my last video was on the 21st of March and like I said, lots of things had happened the Sunday, the Monday, so it's like the 18th, the 19th, 20th and stuff like loads of stuff in meditation I forgot to mention I'd had another really strong one now when I say I have a really strong one what usually precedes a strong one is um, I'm sitting here and I feel like I'm over on my side or upside down or spinning round but like majorly strong like really strong and and then once I get used to, say, <laughs> thinking I'm laying over on my side or something, then then I start to feel that sort of connection with the oneness of everything, the one love. Now this is actually what's bringing me back with AJ Miller a bit, is because I'm seeing lots of people on YouTube talking about this the one love and everything and I mean Jim Carrey you know he's basically saying he's not him you know he, and all this stuff and you've got these people saying this but so they're missing out on a big part of the truth here and um, kind of the only other person apart from religious people so the only other person I know of who talks about a personal God, a mother and father, an entity, even though he's changed it and now he's saying it's infinite, but it is AJ Miller. Um, so to say that God is an entity, a caring, loving entity, our mother and father, who the one love is also going through God. So anything we get comes through God. It was supposed to be about the event. I'll try and stay on track. Um, so these these few days, I was getting some really strong feelings, and um, but you know n nothing that I've not had before. So I made that video on the twenty first, and that evening sat down again to meditate, and I just thought there ain't going to be no event without something of the soulmate. The 
few odd connections I've had with soulmate feelings over the last, say, six months have been amazing. Amazing. You know, if I compare it to the connection with God, I'd even say it's stronger. So it's more, so feeling that soulmate feeling in your soul is like, I'd almost say it's almost stronger than your feeling with God. And it's not like God minds. I mean, you know, God, <laughs> God, God wants you to have your soulmate connection. So yeah, it's a really, really, really amazing thing when you, you start to tap into that. Now I said I thought I'd known my soulmate for, you know, who it is for, for quite a while now, uh, without changing my mind. I think it's been a couple of years without changing my mind, maybe. Um, maybe not quite so long. Um, and, um, oh God, what was I saying? And yes, yeah, so... It was a surprise in a... How does it feel? You know, we have lust for amazingly attractive people of the opposite sex or the same sex, if you think you're homosexual. You know, we have that lust, that want, that need. Oh, I'd love to be with that person, you know, because they're so shapely and so pretty and all that. You know, that sort of desire, lust is... Is definitely not involved much in the soulmate. Um, so the the initial connections I had with my soulmate it was like a, this is where I want to be. This is like, this is home. I feel like I'm coming home. Like feeling that's my soulmate. I feel like I, I'm coming home. It's much more, more of that. But and it, and it's really really strong. And. What, what happened um, on the 22nd of March, and it was about 12 o'clock, it was about 12 midday. Apart from the, that, also at that time the, the Russians made a very strong statement against the treatment they've been having from the British. It's a completely different subject. Um, I had a connection with my soulmate. And for the first time since I since about over twenty years, I had a real it was a really strong sexual. Now I have masturbated about my soulmate in the last year or so, and I usually don't really want to. It's not it's, um, it just doesn't contain that lust. And but I do it anyway, and then it might take a long time, and then it'd be, be, be a really amazing, strong sort of orgasm, <laughs> and feeling good afterwards. And that's, it's kind of got easier, <coughs> but it's still not something that, see, it's, imagery drives the lust. So you, you're doing it in your mind, you're used to sort of, I want to masturbate, so I think of a naked woman, uh, think of her, whatever, yeah, she's quite sexy and up for it, you know, she seems a bit loose or whatever, she'd be up for it, and and then maybe a feeling comes, you know, because you make a connection. So it starts with imagery, it starts like that. So with the soulmate, it's not like that at all. So it doesn't start with imagery. Um, it comes very much from the feeling first. Anyway, so what happened, 12 o'clock, March 22nd, um, suddenly I got this feeling from my soulmate like it was sexual and I got such a huge erection <laughs> it was really painful sitting cross-legged wearing jeans like really painful and I haven't had that size of erection for 20 or over 20 years which is one of the clues that I had for that this person was my soulmate because there was one night we were laying in bed together, nothing happened, we just sleep over 
lay in bed together and I felt this warm feeling coming from her. <laughs> she didn't fart. <laughs> it wasn't that. And uh, I had this huge erection. I really wanted to say something like I love you or whatever, but I didn't. I didn't say anything. Anyway, but that stood out in my life. It was the biggest erection I've ever had in my life. And it was just like, you, you could just feel it. I didn't need to look at it. I could just feel it. So three days ago, whatever it, whenever it was, four days ago, sitting there and it was the time that I'd said perhaps the event's going to happen. And I wasn't trying to pre-predict it or nothing, but something did happen different. It was different. It was new. I didn't force it. It just happened. And, um, yeah. And this is the other thing I'd like to say about the event. Like, stuff can happen in your soul, something new, and you might not think it's a large, uh, anything of consequence at the time. You know, but how many things have happened in your life that ended up being huge, hugely consequential, but at the time you had no idea, really didn't feel like that. So I think a lot of this event stuff is going to be that, is, you know, some things, the way God works through the individuals, something's gone into the soul, something's changed, set a course in a new direction, but the fruits of that may take time to come out. So I think there's going to be a lot of people thinking, oh, the event didn't happen, it was just another one of these, um, um, you know, prediction dates that didn't come true. Um, but I think we're going to find that th gradually through people coming out and saying stuff that that it did, and it and it's and it's going to continue happening. But it's just there was the there was the bulk of it. Now, you know, if we're expecting more like a you know an asteroid impact or you know God to do something like you know just send you know make the skies flash or you know just something so it's absolutely undeniable you can't deny it whatever i don't know but i whatever god does will be loving you know to all and i'm pretty sure god wants there to be plenty of people on the planet that's what god wants even though the elite have been trying to kill us off for the last 7 years right or even longer um, God wants something different and God will get what God wants and um, I'm pretty sure God wants lots of people on the planet so I'm 99% sure that God isn't going to wipe m masses many people out now you could say it would be loving for God just to sort of boom wipe us all out in a couple of seconds so it run nice and quick but you know then we'd have to start all over again somewhere like you know we haven't been having lives on this planet for for perhaps billions of years um for no reason and like i said before the earth repairs itself like there's plants and stuff and that which repair the soil and bring it back into a good natural habitat so if it has the function to repair itself, you know, then, then that's what it will do. And there's a reason for that. And it's because this is useful for God to have this planet with us living these little lives. Okay, so I may have to come back to the event if there's something else I was going to mention. But that brings me on to the... The, the myth busting part of this video and start with previous lives okay so out there in the community with the people being mediums and everything else they're all kind of into this you know you've got your you've had your previous lives and they, they, they do this to explain why their world has got problems because they're saying, you know, you know you're, you're bringing your karma from your previous life into this life. That's why you're having a shit life. That's what they're saying. They're saying, you're having a shit life.
because your karma from a previous life. That's what they're using to explain it. Now, the reason the previous lives theory just doesn't work is numbers don't add up. Right? We've currently got 7 billion people on this planet. Now, there may people argue that some of them aren't real or some of them haven't got souls, but I don't say that much. Every person, human being on this planet is being inhabited by an individual soul, a child of God. And so if you've got 7 billion people alive now, and people are dying every day, so we know some of them must be in the spirit world or in between, there's going to be more, there's going to be quite a lot more. Um, if you look at the population over the last uh, 10,000 years, like, it's so low for ages, like, really, really low. And, and it's only really in the sort of mid-1700s that it begins to sort of, well, I suppose it probably increases a little bit before that, but still very, very low. And then, you know, in the, it's when in the 1970s when it just, it, there's a boom. Well, it starts booming before that, but, you know, really, really increasing in numbers. So we've got so many people. So we can't all have previous lives, can we? As humans, uh, they'll probably say we're animals. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that at the moment. So, you know, we can't have all had previous lives going back in history in the last thousand, few thousand years, which is what everybody thinks. If you listen to people, oh yeah, you had a previous life, you were Victorian, or you had a previous life, or you were the battles of 1400, you know, everyone's even probably more recent. So, it just can't be true. And I think what's going on when people are saying, you know, they're doing some quantum healing or something and they're, they're speaking to their higher self, oh yeah, my previous life, um, you know, I've had images of this, so I was, a you know, Prince Charles's bodyguard in 1682 or something, and that isn't them. They are quite possibly have a spirit friend who was that person. And that's why I think people's previous lives, they're coming in, the, the thing in their previous life, it's not that. That's the people, the spirits, who are hanging around them. Like I say, the numbers don't add up. Alright, so maybe then they'll say, okay, well, some of us are animals, well... You know, why, why make retrograde steps? Now, you speak to geologists or whatever, the scientists. You know, they, they've got scientific evidence that um, people were around like 400,000 years ago. Because they found some... Um, Flint tools, right? So we're supposed to think then that actually human history is, you know, 500,000 years old, or that humans have been here for 500,000 years. So then I guess the previous lives people will say, well, yeah, you know, we've been here 500,000 years. It's possible that it's spread out and we all had a life as a basic human, but I don't think that's what's happened, right? So as I've said in previous videos, I think we've, our souls, have been using this earth for billions of years. Well, God has been using it basically, but, you know, to, to take these brand new eternal beings who've had no experience whatsoever, to begin to give them experiences so that they so that we
can grow. So over the course of Earth's history we've had all these, we've been every single animal there is, but we were never fully aware, we didn't have that part of the brain that we have now, you can sit and think, I, I, I am, I think therefore I am, and stuff like that. So when, so when we get to 400,000 years ago, and you've got these few Neanderthals around making flint tools, again, the numbers were very, very small. So why would God make these more advanced beings than than we've had before and and just have a few of us live lives of them. I don't think that was the case. I think it was God's preparation. I think God had this plan, this 6,000 year plan, and it was preparation for that. So they're, they're, they're low in, they're very low in numbers. You know, you've got a few Neanderthals here, you've got a few different hominoid species here, there and everywhere, dotted around the world. And that's what I, that's what I feel. I feel like that's the only thing that's plausible. You know, if you sit and meditate on it and feel what is the truth about this. I mean, that's how I get my truth. Most of it, I mean, I listen to other people and I think what, what they say and stuff, well, of course. But how, I get, how I've been getting my truth the last few years is through meditation. You know, there was, I was sitting there meditating and I kept getting this thing about the moon. And there's something on the far side of the moon. That was through meditation. It wasn't someone telling me. It just kept coming up. It kept coming up. I'd bat it away and that was ridiculous. But it kept coming up. So, previous lives, yes. But your life now, bringing karma from a previous life, no. Because when we were animals and we died, we had no, we had no karma to deal with. Because we were just being ourselves. We were just doing what we felt like and so there was nothing there was no sort of repercussions of that we just went died went back into the loveliness of being with God sort of like an incarnate state like a non-aware state and that these lives we're having now is all part of God's 6,000 year plan and so the people who were say, you know, around Abraham's time, you know, they, they, the reason they had to, the reason, so none of us, so from that point, from Adam and Eve, when we died, we no longer went back into the nestle with God in an incarnate state. They, they had to stick around, and this is what the spirit world is like, a vault. And, you know, it's expansive, it's huge, you know, it's a place for everybody and, and you, and you, and you get the, you, you arrive in the, in the state that you sort of got yourself into on the earth and, and people have been able to improve their states, but they've got to hang around because this is all part of the plan, this plan that, for us to become aware of what we are and this is what's happening and we're past the point of no return it is it is happening so yeah just to sum up then dispel the myth of previous lives just do the numbers Do the numbers, feel the plausibility, is it in line with what a loving God would do? And we can do the same thing with what people feel about aliens. <coughs> now, so there's a lot of people, you know, saying, yeah, we've got, you know, Pleiadians, and we've got Octavians, and there's 
mantis things I've heard about, but before they were, they were going to the the, the greys, the tall whites, the short whites, and you know, all this sort of... Because what triggers in people's imagination is okay, there's a massive universe out there and there's life on this planet. So as soon as we start to go right, here's some evidence that there's been some other sort of higher technology here, right, and so we quickly formulate the theory that there's aliens all throughout the universe, you know, and there's going to be umpteen thousand different types of species, you know, it's just like Star Trek, basically. Um, and, you know, you even hear people saying, you know, well, the Anunnaki made us and stuff like that as a slave race and stuff, you know, and they're, they're just kind of just assuming it's so and, and, and taking that on as reality without, you know, asking the obvious questions like, well, hang on, if they made us, who made them? You know, you've still got, you're always going to have that. Or, you know, here, here's a higher race who made us. Okay, well, that explains something, but who made them? You haven't got that explanation. And um, it, it wouldn't fit. If we if we were going to have you know billions of aliens on every other planet here and there, you, the numbers are just far too big to all say that we're children of God. Then it just doesn't add up. And and then you know and then they'll include some evil aliens and stuff like that. Well, one thing I've always always felt is that God has designed it so that we wouldn't be able to go out and travel the stars until we've learned how to look after this planet. So straight away, even from a very young age, I just thought, you know, there's not going to be evil aliens. God isn't going to have allowed that to happen. But what I actually, you know, you got this is why I think the numbers are quite important and Perhaps people thought it was a bit silly of me to try and work out how many children of God there are, but I think it's it helps you, to, it helps me now also to just keep an eye on what reality is. So there are a hundred billion galaxies in this universe. This universe is the physical manifestation of our mother and father God. So. 100 billion galaxies, all with a black hole in the centre. Kind of makes sense to me. God's got 100 billion children. So that's 100 billion soul pairs. Now we know we've got 7 billion of us alive on this planet right now. And that's 3.5 billion soul pairs, right? So there's only a small portion of the hundred billion out there in the universe. But not everyone who's been alive on this planet is currently alive today. So you've got a whole bunch in the spirit world. Now, the number I came to, if you think about all the people who've been miscarried, and think about all the abortions, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna sort of almost double it double what's alive today and then if you go right back in the past all the way 6,000 years double it again so that comes to 14.4 billion soul pairs and if there are six other earths in this universe six times 14.4 is 100 it's actually 100.8 so that to me was just Pretty damn close. Now, obviously, the people who've counted the number of galaxies in the universe, they obviously haven't counted them all because that would take more than a lifetime. So they've taken an area and they've counted. It's an estimation, right? But just interesting how that tallies up. So, and I did a, th a video ages ago called the 144,000, and that's what this is about. So, with those numbers, 
you know, you can't have thousands of planets in the universe with thriving populations. That they couldn't all be God's children. And you and you gotta think why we're here. Right? What made this? It's not a fluke. It didn't just flukely happen. It's been designed, it's been planned by a much more clever person than what we could probably imagine. And loving, you gotta remember that. All loving, very important. And I think God would make it so the truth could be quite easily digestible, even by a child. You know, perhaps I don't put it in the best way, but the facts that I've laid out could be quite easily presented to a child to understand. Doesn't have to be all rocket science. So you know what I think about that. Right. So, where are the people coming out with all these names? I mean, the Pleiades is a mini galaxy that's within the Milky Way galaxy. You know, the centre of the Milky Way galaxy is supposed to be, is that a thousand, was it a, it's a hundred thousand light years away, pretty sure. Anything that happens at the centre of our galaxy, we wouldn't see for a hundred thousand years. <laughs> Interesting. Now I think the way we're going to be able to visit our our brothers on these other six planets will be instant teleportation and it will probably be it's probably something that the pyramids have been set up for they're not quite finished so we'll understand it we'll finish it and we'll be able to teleport and the way we you know because you want to get in a spaceship and travel a hundred thousand light years and you'd only be at the center of our own galaxy you know, um, it would be boring, wouldn't it? So, but before we visit them, we'll connect with them telepathically, and that's probably already happening, and possibly that's what's happening when people are saying, oh, we're talking from the Orion Council, good afternoon, what's your question? And, uh, you know, all this other stuff so they, they maybe these names are coming out but maybe there is some connection going on with our brothers on the other six earths and i suppose that's again why i want to sort of i do feel a bit bad about calling out aj miller as the antichrist and stuff and because you know again that's something which he said and i can't not give recognition for for the truth that he's come out with and I know I've been totally up and down with him very hot and cold and it is a thing and I mean he's been he's been getting at me telepathically especially like these event days like you know he, he wanted to he wanted to smack my neck uh, like you won't be able to because I've got God protecting me so there are lots of things that annoys me about him. I do feel like in some ways he's anti-me, anti-Christ, but, um, you know, he's, he's also said some very interesting things and many true things. He certainly knows his emotions. And I feel like I'm repeating myself. I said all this before. So let's just leave it, shall we, AJ? Just, just leave it, right? If you, you know, agree to disagree, I'm not taking down those videos. I'm leaving them called what they are. It is what it is. It's been done. If you, if you really care about it that much, you can you can email me. I, I can't email you because you blocked me. But, um, so, right. And if you want to get any of your mates to give me guilt trips and stuff like that, you know, just, just let's just draw a line under it, all right? Just forget about it. Forget about it. I mean, you've done, you've done like 20 videos called Forgiveness. Perhaps you should employ that and just forgive, right? La 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 la. Right, right, what else have we got? That's pretty much it. 
two types. And I like the the this one. This is what I mean. You can keep it simple, right? We've got this duality in the universe as I've talked about, male and female. But there's also another duality: parent and child. And that's what that's what we is. We we are the children in the parent. I think I think I've scantily covered what I wanted to say. So it's all good. It's all good. Everyone's got to do it individually. I listened to this, um, a new guy on YouTube, Ivan Teller is his name, <laughs> got a few thousand subscribers, and he's doing, um, he's doing, a, a, he's not Orion Council, he calls it something else, he's Zeta Council, he's, he connects with many different um, so-called aliens and gives people advice, and when he, you know, he's talking about, when he's on his own and he's just talking about he connects to someone and he's telling us about the you know stuff in the universe and the aliens and what they're doing and to me it just sounds like complete bs and i think that's again like a medium is a filter so he is his belief system is a filter so if he believes in aliens you know that's going to come across in his filters but i don't think he's particularly good medium you know sim mediums who sort of switch into you know, the, you can feel there's another person there sort of thing. doesn't really get that from him. But when I watched one of his webinars, when he's helping people, people on the phone and they're asking him questions, you know, he does, it, it's very quick it, it fl and fluid and it, it kind of gets a bit better after a few minutes as well, which is common with a lot of YouTubers. Um, so I do have to hand it to him, you know, he's, he's doing something right but I, I caution these people who just you know and, and I'm sure they won't I'm sure they will use their own discernment and whether they like the answer they got or not um, but they should be careful you know not just because this guy has obviously got other intentions he wants to grow his channel he wants to make a living from it and you just got to be cautious in that. He's got some gift. He's got some talent. <coughs> and I'm sure there's lots of other, lots of other YouTubers like that. I just, you know, just say, be cautious and include them with me. I'm speaking the truth as I know. I do it, you know, from the heart without, without any guilt or aim to trickery or anything like that. But, you know, we're, we're all going to need to learn the lessons for ourselves anyway. So, yeah, don't rely on too many other people. Rely on God, on God, your mother and father. We love you very much. And we're all one big happy family, and we're gonna get happier. Yes, we are. So, I think that's it. So, ciao, bye.